from Times Square, which really isn't square at all. It's All Night with Joey Reynolds. I'm Big J. Sorensen from CBS FM 101.1. Our guests tonight, tax expert Dave Selly. Friend of Lucille Ball, one-man phenomenon, Jim Brochu. The singing CPA, Steve Zellin. Internet TV host and Webby winner, Derek D. Wine master, Kevin Sralli. Musical guests, little big band leader, Therese Janeko. And singer, songwriter, composer, Marcus Goldhaber. And now, the guy who sold out faster than the new iPad 2, and whose battery lasts longer, Joey Reynolds. Oh, I tell you, boy. Now, now, who was that guy that was on the subways uh, that was America's Biggest Loser? What's his name again? Oh, gosh. The guy with the subway sandwiches. Oh, uh, uh... Remember a couple of years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, I know. They still use them in commercials. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's... Do you know who it is? Garrett. 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 Now, we don't know if America's Biggest Loser is Garrett or is it... Jared. Is he, what's his name? His name is Jared. 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 What are you Jared. yelling at me for? Jared. Jared. All right. Stop Let's screaming get, at him, please. Right. Hey, my hair looks like Conan O'Brien tonight. What the hell is going on? Am I, <laughs> am I going to get $40 million? <laughs> Why don't they, <laughs> they ought to put my head in the back seat of a car and That's bob it, it back and forth? <laughs> <laughs> well, they already got that false idol, you know, that image of me already. Really? So what's his name, Jaron? Jared. 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 As in the All diamond right. place. Uh, well, Amer <laughs> Jared. Jared. Okay, thank you. You know, a lot of the people in the black community make up these names. I don't know when it started, but you know, it, it was like Keisha and these names. You know, we didn't used to, you don't meet a lot of black people in my neighborhood named Betty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> no, what? Jared, Jared is a, is a made-up name. That's not a biblical name. No. You know, names, the Jewish names come from the Bible, but you have to wait till someone dies before you name the person. You know, I mean, that, that's a, it's Jewish tradition. Now, my daughter named her son Joey. I said, I'm not dead yet. She said, and I'm not Jewish. I said, yeah, good. So we got little Joey now. Jared is white. I don't care what color he is. It's not the point. What is this? We're not into a racial thing. No, I mean, I was into the Jew thing, not the racial thing. Uh, but, you know, I mean, if you're going to if you're going to offend someone, you may as well. I was watching that uh, that movie that uh, the, probably the worst Brad Pitt performance ever, but really a good film that uh, Erroneous Bastards or whatever it's called. What's that thing? In Inglorious. Ingl Inglorious or yes. something. That's a very interesting film. You know, I mean, the Nazis really they had they were organized. I mean, they, to, to they, a point. They, were, they, they knew how to make everybody mad. Until 1945. <laughs> Whoa, uh, it was a problem. There's a lot of problems. I want to mention a couple of them tonight. Uh, oh, if America's Biggest Loser ought to not be Jared, but should be, uh, it should be uh, Sheen. What's his name again? No, no it's Charlie. Charlie please. Sheen, yeah. I keep thinking I think of Martin Sheen. I'm not going to mention Sheen. him anymore. I'm an older guy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want to bring his name up tonight. Why did I do that? Uh, the thing that I was thinking about was Japan, you know, sadly, with, with all the things that are tragic in our world. And, and, and you know, you can't help but, but be very horribly impressed with the Japanese people and how they're handling their, their tragedy. And also the fact of the matter is how generous we are, and I think it shows the great compassion we all have on this planet when it's necessary and needed. Mm -hmm. And here's the good news. It bumped all that crap off the news Thank goodness. about Libya and everything else. Do you see what happens now? And I'm, I'm saying this for a good reason. You know, God, and this is not a religious statement, I don't think. God in his divine wisdom figured, okay, enough already with this, with this ridiculous, not getting along stuff. You know, we have a, a, a natural tragedy, which is evident from nature. And, and we have this tragedy. Now we put our minds on helping each other and serving each other. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that we have to do it through these means where something horrible happens, but the fact of the matter is it brings us all together and away from that. Yeah. Now, here's the part that really I don't see on television. I've been watching a lot of TV since I've been on it. 
And you know, I mean, I'm not a real big television fan in a long time. I like certain shows. Maybe that's the way you watch it. But I, I don't like to just sit and park in front of the box. It's not, not my thing. But I've been watching a lot of it lately because I want to improve what I'm doing and I also want to see what everybody else is doing because you got it, it's a craft, you know. And I was thinking, this is what you don't hear about this gasoline and oil price thing. This is what they don't talk about. I can't understand this. This is the lie. How is it when we are in an expansion of the economy, we say, well, the world, use, we use most of the oil in the world, or we use the most of any free country. And, and when the other countries, like China, come into the game, they need oil. And we have now entered into some sort of a relationship with them where we provide a lot of cars, and, and they are now driving. They have pollution as a bad news. but. They have, they have more oil consumption now in China, mm -hmm. right? So the Chinese are using more oil, and everybody around the globe whom we have done business with, in, including our own armies, where we are in many places using equipment that requires gasoline. So we're, we're, the oil is being consumed, and, it's, and, and the prices have gone up because we're using more of it. Now, here's Japan, where we've had a tragedy. That's, is that my microphone going off? Probably God punishing me. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we, we, have a, we, have a, we have a tragedy in Japan where there's been some sort of a uh, less oil use, wouldn't you say? Well, now, right yeah. now there will be, All yeah, right. certainly. And yet the prices went up. Well, so how do, you, how do we justify every time something happens raising prices of oil? Where the, does that come from? The speculators do it, and they get scared. And when they get scared, they raise the price. Well, they're speculating on what? They're speculating on the future price of gasoline, and that's ridiculous. Well, I think they're a bunch of dipsticks. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think it's, it's absolutely, totally crap. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we really, why don't we talk like this on the television, on the news? Well, we are. You did. Well, we just did. did. But this show here, I mean, if I had Esso as a sponsor, do they still have that? Or <laughs> Chevron or Exxon, or whatever they want to call it. Or Mobile, mobile Gas. Do Wait, we have Sinclair, flying, the dinosaur. Do they still have that tiger and that flying horse? Flying A, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Oh boy, anyway, you haven't driven in a while, have you? The fact of the matter is that we're still doing the same game. No matter what the conditions are, we always find a way to raise yep. the prices. Mm -hmm. So I, to, to get a cheap, uh, uh, thrilled today. I went to Jersey for gas. Well, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, not if you pay six dollars to go over the bridge. <laughs> well, well, it depends on what kind of car you yeah. have. You got to think the six dollars that I spent to go over the bridge, I could have avoided the Try big eight. weight. It's eight bucks. Is it eight Joey. bucks? That yeah, I spent? It's eight dollars. I, 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 I thought Easy Pass was for 42nd Street for hookers. <laughs> But I don't know. It's 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 just gotten ridiculous. You yeah, can't and you can't really make any sense out of anything no. anymore. The regular guy gets screwed yes. all the time. Anymore. Absolutely. And I'm and I have uh, a lot of compassion for for being a regular guy because uh, I've been through a lot of the issues. Yeah. You know, bankruptcy, foreclosure, divorce, uh, alcohol, drug. I think I've been through a few of those. You're pretty things, regular. Right? Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm a regular guy. I'm a <laughs> country <laughs> song waiting to waiting to hit the charts. <laughs> yeah, you notice when I first started talking, there was a crowd out there yeah. watching, and then as I got more into this, they started to leave. No, they're actually behind were, you, jumping up and down. Are like they behind Conan. me jumping? Yeah. I, well, do you have a camera, Dan? Are you going to ever show the crowd out there? Or well, he'd have to take uh, it off of an me. An illusion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have to take the one off of Jay. Yeah, that's okay. That's yeah, all right. That's, oh, don't take it no, off. No, I have Jay. a face so for radio. It's all right. It's all right. All right, so we went out for a Reynolds wrap, which we did. We I got out there with them earlier, and, yeah. and let's let's see what we got out there tonight. It was a, uh, a three-dog night again. Weather's changing. Yeah. It's, it's getting to be a little Warmer bit more like, uh, like spring. I yeah. could tell because I saw a hearse with its top down. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to, the, uh, to our, little, our little tapes that we made earlier, yeah. uh, the Reynolds wrap, and then we'll come right back at you. Yeah. Okay? Let's roll what we did tonight. Everywhere I go, there's a camera. I feel like a, I'm stealing something. Where's Spider-Man? I got something you've been needing. I noticed you've been standing out here every night and you don't have a script. So I give you the playbill. That's <laughs> right, thanks, bro. Hello, how are you? Speak English. Oh, you don't? Well, what's your name? What's your name? William. Do you guys speak English? No. No, it's Spanish. It's Spanish. Why do we have. Nobody's from here. Hi, guys. Do you speak English? No. No? Where are you from? From Russia. 
from Russia. Nobody speaks English. You don't speak English? A little, a little. A little bit, just a little bit. Where are you from? We're from London. How are you? Nice to know you. What's your name? Jessica. I, hello, Jessica. How are you? You look stunned. <laughs> and don't fall on anybody. Hello. Are you from Are you from Spain? Spain. Spain. Canary Island. Oh, well, welcome to America. Welcome Gran to Canaria. Gran Canaria. Wonderful to have you here. <laughs> Good seeing you, bro. But I love that web. You got a nice web. Where are you from? Where do you come from? No, no, I speak English. No? Where are you from? Italy? No. No Italian? Well, you look Asian. Yes, we're from Hong Kong originally. Ah, I love Hong Kong. I've been to Hong Kong just last year. Where are you from, Moscow? St. Petersburg? From Moscow. Good, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much. You are the third person I've stopped tonight who does not speak English. Nobody is speaking English. We are having no English spoken here. No English. No English. <laughs> Where, what, what language? Chegamos hoje. And here, here, they're not lying. They don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> so how long are you here for? Just for a week. Just one week. Yeah. Everybody I've talked to tonight, not anybody has been from here except one, one person, right? From London, from Russia. Most of them were not speaking English. Thank God. Do they speak English in England? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. That's what I heard. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I love that show. Uh, me too, bro. I brought a net. <laughs> What are you eating? God, that looks terrible. <laughs> That's my show in there, television show. I'm just coming out here to see how you're doing. But we're getting getting people from all over the world. Ah, it is your show. Yeah, it would be nice to have somebody from here. Press two for English. <laughs> how about you? Do you speak English? Yes, you know me. You know I speak English as well as you do. Yeah. Yes. How are you, Paul? I'm fine. I'm actually looking for my wife, who you love. I think we married you as well as her. That's right. Is so she around here somewhere? She's around here somewhere. She called me, and she's going to be doing something. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. She said thank you. I think she spoke English. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A masterpiece. Yeah, now, you know, we had a, uh, I, I, I was ranting a little bit over there. Well, it's okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I hope that I don't come off like too much of a fool. I guess I said a lot of things that I would like to take back. Well, we can edit. But I'm not going no. to. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it back. as it is. Let it go. Uh, NBC wants to see some of the old tapes of the shows. They discover that we're on the air. They found out? They found out. They, we, we're in trouble. Oh, somebody stayed up past midnight. And that's a bad, oh. and, and, and discovered we're here, and they want to see the shows, but they're not willing to sit, sit through it. Right. They it's want the fast tapes forward. of last week so they can make sure oh. that nothing happened. They're going to put it on a DVR. You know, I'm starting right. to look like that guy that's on New York One, you know, does the news. It doesn't. That can't be. <laughs> <laughs> no. see, you was, everybody starts to look the same after a while, you know. Well, it's like you, you during my drinking same. days. You don't look the same. Oh, man. All right, we, we have Paul DeVere and Goldie DeVere. You know, I, 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 I don't you know, I ran into them outside tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, Goldie is a makeup artist extraordinaire. And uh, we have a little bit of a tape here of, of something that, you know, other than the Reynolds rap, mm -hmm. I ran into, into, into Goldie outside mm -hmm. and she was hustling. Hustling. Running her own game, you oh. know, of, of selling makeup for... On the street. In, on the street, yeah. Wow. You know, I mean, it's down to this now. You know, at least she did not. She didn't even have the dignity to go door to door. Wow. This is just. I awesome. should sell. I should sell old records on the street now. Well, what happened here is the mayor has decided to cut out a lot of the street fairs. Yeah. And they're going to cut them down for a couple of reasons. Well, you know, they're income for the city. Yeah. But they have to pay the cops more. Yes. And that's that's not in the budget. And they have to close streets, and, and they, it's a mess. Well, Sometimes. they don't care about closing streets. They should close them anyway, just on principle. Yeah. First of all, you know, we have a bike lane, mm -hmm. we've got a bus lane, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a Lois lane. Right. What, what, what they really need is a, they need a taxi lane where all these madmen from Queens stay in one just line. stay in that one, one line all line. the way and it should go right up and down and nobody should go cross town. Yeah. There that, should be no cross town traffic. That could work. Yeah. Make them walk. It's good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> good for you. Now, the cabs ought to piggyback. What they should do is they go only a certain distance, then they got a tag team yeah. and get the next cab. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And put people in it, in it that way, so That's that you it. don't you keep a flow. Where are regular cars going to go? Let's try it. Regular cars are going to go to that Exxon pump that I was talking about <laughs> earlier. 
<laughs> and they're going to be begging. They're going to, you're going to hit a cup against the That's against it. the pump. That's it. Or siphon it yourself. Now you know this is this is the real this is the truth. NBC has television mm -hmm. at the checkouts at supermarkets. Yes, they and do. And at the gas pumps. Yeah, now. they do. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're down to that. You're talking about going door to door. Well, and uh, I think what they ought to do at the gas pumps is show porno, because you should be watching porno while you're getting screwed. Now what about the kids in the back seat? <laughs> Don't let that one go. No, I'm not. <laughs> I was just concentrating that's, on that That's one. the gas sentiment I have. All about. right, that's good. The President of the United States ought to just turn the faucet on and, and let's cut the crap. Well, he doesn't want to go to the reserves. No, no, you go, you go to the reserves. You go, you go to anything you can. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody else lives in the moment. Nobody yeah. lives... Like 30 years from now? There's no 30-year-long no no, jobs no. anymore. By then, there should be better cars. The government is not more than a, a week and a half. Everybody's doing something off. Yeah. So why don't we just use up everything we got? That's it. And then when we run out, we'll start over well, again. Ride camels. Well, <laughs> I don't know about a I got a great camel joke, but I'll wait till Jackie the Joke Man's here yeah. tomorrow. Uh, coming up next is Jim Brosher. But are we going to run that tape with Paul and his wife? We got to do that? Yeah. All right, so, so here's what happened when, when we went outside. Cap on my lips. Yes. This is something that starts off clear and then it turns a special color on everyone. So we're going to get a lot of women over here. We gather gonna... people around. That's why I'm here. You have to get good people now, Paul. All different I always... lips, all I'll different colors. I can do it. I well, can... believe me, trust me, no one speaks English here tonight. That's really? all right. That's all right. They don't have to speak English. They just have to be able to sing. They just have to have lips. You're like this very cool metrosexual now. You know? Why do I feel? Why do I feel insulted? Yeah, You're okay. stealing my women. Excuse me, Joey. I love you, but go away. We're busy. No, 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 no. You, uh, okay, she's stealing Megan. you away from me. Try Wait a minute. Here. Wait a second. What do you think? This is. Uh, this is my corner. Here. She doesn't work the outdoors. She works indoors. <laughs> go back to Bendel's. Do you remember the time I did your makeup? Now watch what happens. Anna and I have the same mindset. Brilliant yeah. minds think alike. <laughs> where are you? Where are you from? I'm from Salt Lake City. What's your name? Megan. Okay. Hello, Megan. Megan. Someone who actually speaks like I do. <laughs> <laughs> no one speaks English here tonight. How's my gloss? Todd, what do you think about the lips? Take a look in the mirror. Oh, well, look she, at the what's the When you look like, it doesn't matter if you put mud on her when you look like this. Gorgeous, what's the difference? <laughs> do you like the gloss at all? Can you see it? Can you see it, Daniel? No? You know, I think I'm going to stick a Q-tip in my ear and stop <laughs> listening to all of this. He's jealous. He wants to. <laughs> By the way, you know, one of my favorite segments that you do is yeah. a segment when you come out on the street and you ask people all those stupid questions, you know? Wait a minute. They're not stupid questions. They're in... Oh, well. Does this look all right? Does it, does it look all right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't look all right. It doesn't look okay. Right. Why are you backing good. up from the mic? I've got to go do my job. Take care of yes. him. It's been a wonderful Joey. meeting you. I hope you don't uh, do what the Mormons do, uh. which is to have many wives. They don't do that anymore, do they? They actually don't. No. Thank no. God they stopped that. Ancient history. Yeah. You wish you lived in those times, Joe? No, because I couldn't handle one, let alone all of them. Are you kidding? <laughs> I used to love it. We got quite a show tonight. I wish it would begin. Yeah. I mean, I've done I've done more foreplay here than my marriage. You know. Ooh, well, that may be a reason. Now, Goldie's why here. Hi, Goldie. How are you? Hey, Joe. I, I wasn't counting on having you on the air tonight, but since you were hustling the streets, working the streets tonight, I figured. Well, we, also we have too many men on the show. Ooh, just the way I like it. Yeah. Well, we wanted a little bit more. I needed to have a little bit of the uh, uh, of the feminine touch, you know. The feminine touch. Uh, are they? They're making faces behind me out there. Yeah, they're all they going Daniel, nuts tonight. Get, where's your camera? Put them on the people. Out. Dan, where is he? <laughs> He's going in. Where did he go? He's coming in. Dan. They're going nuts the out there The camera on the people outside. Why do people do that? I don't know. Why? I don't oh, get I see. It. We got uh, so Jim Brosh is going to come out. Yeah, and he was getting ready for him. That's mm -hmm. all. Oh, you want to show a little bit of the people no, there? Yeah. That's more people than they're, I've seen. They're pushing on the glass. You guys got to go over Security. there. You have to go there where there's light. <laughs> over there. Yeah, go over there. Go there. over there. There. Where there's light. Go over there. You have to be in the light. You animal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Go I'm towards sure. the light. I'm go not towards sure who's the in the light. zoo. Us or them? I don't uh, know. You know, this is becoming the cheapest shot in history. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you sure? They, see, they think I'm Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> well, it's the hair. Wow, it's the new hair there. A, I like it. They're waiting for a ball to drop. We well, should be at the NBC staff meetings. 
Uh, you know, there's a there's a different kind of a of an attitude around here lately. Have yes, you noticed? Uh, you know has, what it is? What is it? I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's very attractive. Yeah. No, I'm I'm thinking about how I've been watching too much television. I feel like I'm a prisoner of the box. Uh -oh. Well, you once watch, you're on it, you have to watch it. You have to. Well, you know. I, I I'm I'm not so sure it's a good idea. You know, he doesn't want to be influenced by what's I'm on. I'm watching this guy with abs and muscles. This uh, guy on extra. You, what is this thing? I mean, that you have to all of a sudden you got to be. Wait a second. I got to tell you, one of your advertisers, you know, with the thing oh, that yeah. you swing back yeah, and forth. I like when she does that. I like when she does that. But what's the, yeah. the extra show? Mario Lopez or whatever his name is. The one who's on Extra. Uh, what's his Follows name? the news on NBC. You know? Oh, you got you me know. there. You watch no. Extra? Sometimes. Nah. So it's a gossip. You yeah. Know, a gossip. yeah, yeah. It's like Inside Edition. And the guy's kind of got, show. like, you know, he's standing with the kids and he's got this. Right. Yeah. What, what are we doing? I mean, are we all, is, 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 am I missing something here? No. You're missing the, uh, the abs. What, what happened? Now, I'm going to bring this up. I know that I'm going to sound like <laughs> uh, very old right now. <laughs> Well, whatever happened to people like Durward Kirby? Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, that is old Joey. I mean, wow. Can you imagine him with a muscle shirt on? Mm. They didn't used to do this. I mean, even what? Jimmy Dean, who created the sausages. sausage, yes. You know, he was Isn't it sad around. that that's How what he that became happen? known for? You know, the well, sausages. No, well, not his songs, not his acting. Well, nobody ever really cared about the, the physique and the hunk. Well, what about, hunk. wait, what was the guy who, the original guy, what was his name, who, who had the show who lived to be like 80-something? He just died recently. Jack LaLanne. Jack Jack yeah, but he, he was the original. He was a syndicated, I used to, uh, that was a muscle show. Right, I used but to I'm see him But I'm talking about regular morning. television. Where you sat down as a host. Yeah. Mike Douglas was not a hunk. <laughs> no. You know, Mark Griffin. No. I mean, he was, he was a, a hunk, yes. but not in a different way. But, <laughs> you know, but he was a hump. <laughs> but in a different way. There's nobody, nobody really cared in those days about how you were <laughs> built. Yes, built. But it, you, were, now, you, know, you did a now show. It's all about uh, how you look. Bill Collins. It's, but what the hell is this? That you walk out and you got to look like Brad Pitt? It's and you And you have no talent. Nobody cares about talent. They only care about what they see. Well, it's it's very cosmetic, and you—that's yes. what you do. You do cosmetics. Yes, yes. I'm a makeup artist. Yeah, and you and you and yet you have one of the most unattractive husbands. In this. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on. He's certainly not a metrosexual, but he has. He other accused attributes. me of being that today. Really? Well, you are. I am. Yes, that's a good thing. Is it? Yeah. You have the hair working, you have the, your face looks great. You've been using those creams I gave you. We did a little bit of, um, I, a little bit of lip on you tonight. Mm. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I've been using. I think you've been, I think you've been manscaped. No, I've been using, I've been using pancake makeup with a spatula. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know, I know what Pinky put on you tonight, and that's something I gave yeah, her. Yeah, that was good. It's, that's and nice you products. are radiant, if I must say so. Ooh. Oh, well. Now, let's not do, do me the flattery thing, because I'm still going to go this way. Yeah, well. I'm still, I'm still going to go on you. Don't worry about it. I I'm told not giving you, this I, up. <laughs> I told you earlier what wasn't working, so now You I'm and I used to working. go out together. Yes, I miss those days. Because your husband did not want to take you out. He, he likes his four walls. He, he's like a bear that hibernates. You and I went to more shows together than you did with him. And he was <laughs> oh, writing shows. That's, this is true. This is but true. But I've taken you out a lot, haven't I? Yes, you were a very good date. And was I a gentleman? You were a great date. Yeah. The, a gentleman, <laughs> fun to be with. You even let me get dessert. And and did an I, extra, did an extra I open drink. the car door? Always, always. Good, because I don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you in a car. You always had great cars. No, Come I put on. You, I put you in a car, and I yes. also... I would take you to, to dinner or sit under my picture at Lamella's, <laughs> right? No, we had great time together. We went to um, um, the uh, never Feinstein's. The Feinstein's? Yeah. You know, we went to Feinstein's. I was there last night. You took me. The night before. When did I McDonald's? See? I was, only the best yeah. places. <laughs> I saw Dina Martin. She was terrific. I saw her on the show the other night. She She's was fabulous. wonderful. Yes. And I saw her at Feinstein's. She was very, very good. You know, But you know what they did? They did something really different. What? Charged they didn't have the tapes arrive in time, you know, for the... Uh, Opening of her show, she does a retrospective with oh, Dean Martin. Oh, really? Okay, I haven't and seen And since it show. wasn't set up, they had a guy who played an accordion from Norway <laughs> and a yodeler. <laughs> and this is at Feinstein's with this wonderful, Wait a you know, these uh, overdressed... A yodeler? High-priced uh, nightclub people, you know. Was this the Ed Sullivan show? And, yeah, was the I mean, that's Wait, what, that's was the yodeler did. just, like, sort of sitting there? Did he happen to be there? How did they... How did that happen? No, I think they booked the act, but it was... They slipped it in on us or something. Maybe he was, was in the fun. back room. It was fun, you know. I mean, Val de Rive, Val de High, you know, or whatever right, it is. Right, right, right. It, it was like, uh, like Norwegian Idol. 
<laughs> There's nothing worse than an accordion on, uh, as a featured instrument. You know? It can't be any worse than American Idol That's has true. been, so yeah. it had well, to be better than that. Now, I don't know about that show. I don't watch. See, I don't watch the, the ratings are up yeah. again. It's starting to come back. That, well, but, that makes well, me why, Ill. Are, why are we interested in ratings? What does it matter if everybody watched something that you didn't like? What does it matter if everybody votes on someone you don't want? What does it matter if everybody looks at you, but you don't have what you want? See, the self-esteem is the part that you need to be worried about or working on, mm -hmm. not what everybody else thinks. Where we live in this society is an image, and we need to live. See, image is what you think of me. That can be arranged That's right. through a publicist. Mm -hmm. It can be arranged through a PR campaign. Sure. That's right. But character is what God thinks of me, and that's a whole different ball game. So if we work on our character rather than our image, you know, what, what are the polls? What are the ratings? What do people think of me? Well, How do I look? If that's the case, you're number one. What do I drive? Where do I live? Yeah, I know. I Who got am it. I seen? Oh, with? I got it. I got it. But you're that's, talking about real people and real life. Well, These are real qualities. We got, we're going to come to that because we're, all the other stuff is being scraped off, if yeah. you notice. That's why I'm talking this way in the air. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's cut the crap about oil. You want to raise the price of oil? Don't tell me that it's because... There's a tsunami, or don't That's tell me right. because people are using more of it. And I really hate when so I hate this one. This one here sends me this it sends my teeth to my socks. What's that? When they say, "Well, they pay more for it in Europe." Yeah. What the uh, hell does that mean? Do that. Uh, yeah. They're, they're I mean, trying what? to make us feel like like yeah. we're lucky. I don't, you're going to make me feel anything. You're going to make me feel poor by charging me five bucks a gallon for gas. Yeah, well. That's really what you're going to do. Hello? It used to be a quarter, mm -hmm. 25 cents, but of course the job would pay only $5 a week. Right, you know, right. I don't remember back that far. Well, I do. I, I, do I, remember. I remember Derwood Kirby. Derwood Kirby. <laughs> no, I remember Derwood Kirby, Derwood too. Kirby. I'm sorry to Let's say that. Let's bring Jim Brosher's is... coming out here now. He remembers when this was a restaurant, this NASDAQ building. <laughs> oh, you know, Paul said that so before. We're, we're going to bring him out. Jim, take a break after first. we take a break, yeah. we'll take a break and be right back with Jim Brosher. <laughs> I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over five million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-440-2181. 1-800-440-2181. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com.
Everybody knows I like my daughter. I, I have two of them, but I, my daughter, who is in New York with me, uh, has uh, decided to go to the theater. Now, these kids, when they were 10 and 13, loved Les Mis. And I wasn't into the whole thing. They saw Rent a thousand times. Every, I mean, every time they come to visit me in New York from Florida, they would have to see Rent. I was trying to pay it. <laughs> but they, they loved the show, but Les Mis, when they went to uh, a camp for kids in the summer, which was done by Derry, I got to think Darian. of her last name. Uh, Derry, I forget her last name for a second. Oh. But she was a producer who, who became, she produced big on Broadway. I just forgot her name for a second. But she was very nice, and she, and she had a camp for kids, and they would learn one show, and they all learned Les Mis. Now, Les Mis is on its 25th anniversary. Oh. On public television, they're running this four-hour spectacular right and it's it, it knocks your socks off because there's four different cast cast people Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean was played by four different people right. and they have all of them out there and they they're selling the they're hawking the the DVD so that you support public television and you know uh, the thing that I I really enjoyed was the music was so great and I I now come to appreciate it because I'm I, I'm into it a little bit now my one daughter uh, Mercedes I took with me to the theater last week and we ran into Jim Brosho. So as we were coming out of the theater, I said to her, you just met one of the best actors on Broadway. Mm. He's one of the best actors that we have. Uh, I, I, last year, he played Zero Mostel brilliantly. And uh, we have him here tonight. And he, he, he wants to talk about a lot of other things, but I wanted to mention that. Here's Jim Brosho. Come on, Jim. And he looks like uh, he is. Oh, dapper. a movie star. Oh, dapper, the movie dapper. star tonight. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Look at the th I'm waving to the throng. The throng. <laughs> throw, throw bouquets. <laughs> Hello, my friend. There's a crowd outside waiting there for is. you. There is. All two of them. Hello <laughs> out there. My fan. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How you doing? Well, we're, we're, we're just waiting for some entertainment tonight. <laughs> well, keep waiting. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell me that. Oh, At no. these prices? That's true. <laughs> Do you know what, what I was thinking when we first came here? This building has a tremendous history. I mean, it's a new building. But do you re you're a New Yorker, right? Yeah. What was here before? Do you remember? Oh, boy. Uh, hookers? That, well, they were right there. In fact, They're still there. there were two from 1958 that are still there. <laughs> that's, that's Molly and Janice, and uh, they're collecting Social Security. When I was growing up, thank God I was a New Yorker, and I was lucky that I had a family that supported my habit of yeah. going to the theater. Very lucky. And it, my, my father really loved that. This was originally Toffinetti's. Mm. Do you remember the restaurant yeah. Toffinetti's and, and the ladies would eat here before the Wednesday matinee? And then I spent quite a bit of money in this uh, place when it was Nathan's. Oh, oh Nathan's. Yeah. This That's was right. Nathan's right. famous. Now right. I remember. The door was right there. Right. Where Cindy and Marla are. <laughs> <laughs> the, don't looking. turn around. Don't turn around. They're looking. They're looking. Don't turn around, Joey. Cindy. And the, <laughs> and, yeah, the yeah. and the counter was right there. And where we're sitting is where um, they had like a counter and you could eat your hot Standing dog and, up, right. and look out at Bambi and Rachel or whatever their names are. <laughs> are, you, are you in a theater uh, production in New York now? I know you just got off the road with Neil Simon. We just, uh, well, that was a wonderful experience. I did the Sunshine Boys with Theodore Bakel. Oh the wonderful Theodore Bakel. Wonder and we actually, at, at uh, the breaks, we turned into the Sunshine Boys. I said, you did it a couple of years ago, yes, with, with so-and-so. Terrible man. Oh, yes, but he was dead at the Belasco. What are you talking about? It was the Morasco. <laughs> and so we're turning into the guys. The door! The Enter! door! Enter! 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 <laughs> Enter is in my 50% of the act. It's, you know, and the play still works. Yeah. It really does. Neil Simon. Neil Simon. Well, you just saw oh. a Neil Simon show the other night, too. Now, what did you see? What, no, wait, we, you and I ran into each other at Cactus Kaufman. Flower. Was, who, who wrote that? George S. Kaufman wrote it. Wrote Cactus Flower? Yeah. No. 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 Mm. no, it was written by Abe Burroughs. Abe Burroughs, that's why. Who meant. based it on a play from 1927. <laughs> um, now, Abe Burroughs was one of those guys who was the Algonquin Rock. No, table? he was after the Algonquin time. Abe Burroughs came along the late 40s, early 50s. Yeah, he was on What's My Line. He was on What's My Line, okay. and, and there was another show called That Show Business. What about Derwood Kirby? <laughs> Okay. He was very tall. Derwood Kirby. I love Derwood Kirby, and, and Abe Burroughs was very short. Yeah. Uh, to get back to your question, no, my show closed. 
I did, uh, I did the show for 14 months, 247 performances. Yeah. Wow. Not missing a performance. That's I'm very fabulous. proud of, it should be. of well, me. Well, the Zero Mostel show is absolutely a, a, a Tony-winning performance. Thank you. Really? Thank you. It was, I mean, I, I, I believe that, that you're him at this well, point. I, he inhabits me when I do the show. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky as a kid. I knew Zero when I was 14 years old. I used I, to hang out Zippo. with him. Zip, Zippo marks. <laughs> no, no, the letter. Zero. Oh, it's Zippo. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to terrify me, but I thought now I have to take it on. And his life was so rich, in that he was excluded for everything from right. everything. You know, he was uh, blacklisted. Well, he didn't talk. He yeah, didn't talk. He, now and, do a little scene from that. Do a little yeah, scene do, I, from I, that. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but do. Uh, this you know what I'll do? I'll what? do his club act. Right. He, in 9th, December the 28th of 1941, he made his club debut at Cafe Society down at 2 Sheridan Square. Okay. And so uh, he came out and he told three jokes. He said, um, <clears throat> I'm a little teapot. Wait, maybe I can stand up because you need the, uh, the visual. All right, are you with me here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my dam. I'm a sugar bowl. <laughs> <laughs> then he'd say, did you hear about the Hasidic rabbi? He walked into a bar. He had a parrot on his shoulder. The bartender said, where did you get that? The parrot said, they're all over Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one is, the other day, well, he was changing his name at this point, and we make a reference to it just before this club act starts. And so I said, uh, I said, the other day a friend of mine came up to me and said, hey, Sammy. <clears throat> the other day a friend of mine came up and said, hey, Zero, <laughs> what kind of a girl are you looking for? And I said, well, my friend, I want a girl with, I want a girl with, and I want a girl with. <clears throat> my friend said, well, brains I understand. Money, I understand. Why arthritis? This I don't understand. <laughs> so there's three of zeros jokes. That's funny. That's funny. Well, you, you, you did such a good job with it. But I, Thank I, you. I miss seeing you in performance here because you're always into the role, and it's, and it's joy. I mean, it's joy to watch you work. You I'm coming back next season. I, I have a lot of, uh, I'm going to Toronto for four weeks with Zero to the Al Green, uh, the Harold Green Jewish Theater in Toronto, four weeks there. I'll be doing the Barrington stage. Night in Montreal, San Francisco, Sarasota. But next season, I'm coming back as P.T. Barnum. Ooh. Wow. That wasn't he short? Fast, no, he wasn't that short, as no. a matter You're thinking of Tom Thumb. <laughs> oh, that was P.T. <laughs> Barnum. Was a two Barnum. Guy. Right. That's right. But um, it, it was funny because it was almost like the Sunshine Boys. At one point, Barnum said, you know Chang and Eng? Yeah. He said, Cheng, I could make laugh, and I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on for a minute. We've got to bring Marcus Kohlhaber out here. He's going to sing a song a break. for us. Excellent. Uh, we've got Jim Brochus here and also uh, Goldie DeVere, and, and Jay has joined us on the panel. We'll, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be right back. I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced it targets your entire core upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques, all in one circular motion as it aerobically burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy, and take just three minutes a day. And watch this. Simply remove the pin, and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat-burning bun and 
Wi-Fi machine. On the AppCircle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the AppCircle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds, I feel great, and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the AppCircle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, we'll send you Jennifer Nicole Lee's complete Lose Your Love Handle system, which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free. That's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab. You have nothing to lose but inches, so pick up the phone and call now. Call 1-800-709-1301 to try AppCircle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your AppCircle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. pants that fits me properly. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, Goldie said that we should do those promos that, I, that we had that promote me a little. We ought to do them over again because oh, totally. I don't look the way that I did the first week of the show. That's right. When I was dressed as a, a cabaret act from Don't Tell Mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it, you, you change as time goes on. and uh, develop. When you show something that was made a little while ago, it looks kind of goofy. You old, know. old. It's yeah, not you like, anymore. Uh, Marcus Goldhaber here, who's from Buffalo originally, and he still wears a hat. This is church. It's a place of worship. This is NASDAQ. Oh, I apologize. I'll take your hat off here. Uh, by all means. Thank you very much. Good I mean, hair, you know, after hair. all, the market went down. Now put your hat on. <laughs> <laughs> now, Marcus is a very fine singer, and he's a jazz singer, and many people don't know that Buffalo is famous for great jazz singers and players. Like Red Menza would be a good one. If you don't know who he is, then you don't know great jazz players. Now, the, uh, gold, the Royal Arms on Delavan Avenue and West Ferry mm -hmm. in New York, in Buffalo, was a place where you would see Professor Irwin Corey hit on every girl ever who, who yeah. ever worked there while he was the comic for Mel Torme, Nina Simone, uh, Dave Brubeck, Every great jazz person played there. Did you ever play that place? I've played a few spots. I've never played that spot. You know though. why? Why is that? Because they closed it the year you were born. <laughs> That's right. Maybe 1976 or something. When were you born? 78. 78, yeah. yeah I mean, you were gone. You're way gone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so God. Mark is a young Maybe. guy, you know. But he keeps the, the uh, music going, keeps the, the uh, standard. I don't want to call it the American Songbook. Because the American Songbook has got a lot of crap in it. <laughs> you don't want to be taking credit for all of that. You'll be doing folklore, you know. <laughs> but some of the stuff that, that you're going to do, I don't know what you're going to do tonight, but I know we spent a lot of time on makeup. So I suppose there's going to be I'm some I'm not wearing any makeup tonight, Joey, I but promise. The young lady in the, in, uh, behind the keyboard, what's her name? This is Janice Friedman. Hi, Janice. How are you? And who's playing bass here? Tom Hubbard. Tom Hubbard? Yes. Hi, Tom. How are you? You know, I like to get the musicians' names on because if you don't have music, you suck. <laughs> you gotta have, no, not you. I mean, you know, We'd be you gotta nowhere, have music. Though. You gotta have Absolutely. music. You know, there's nothing worse than a, a 26 piece band that decides to let you do it a cappella, <laughs> which is right. what Tony Bennett does once in a while. You know, he'll take and just sing. He does one yeah. or two songs like that. Absolutely. You know, every once yeah, in a while. And they're wonderful, but that, but you really like the big, big orchestra. Yeah. Don't you? I brought them all with me tonight. Mm -hmm. I got. I got to tell you. Uh, can I tell you one other Buffalo story? Please do. Jack Jones, remember Jack Jones, the uh -huh. singer, not the sure. old man, but the kid? Sure. Uh, he he w used to sing at the Town Casino in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, it was one of the big nightclubs during the era of the Copacabana mm -hmm. and the Latin Quarter here in New York. And, and uh, what happened with him was uh, Harry Altman, who owned the Town Casino, was cheap. And he hated it, but he had to hire a big band because that was the format. You know, you hired a 16-piece band. So Jack always wanted strings. And he wanted some, a harp and, a, and a, a, another horn. But Harry didn't want to pay for it, so he didn't. But Harry would take hookers <laughs> and go to the Fort Erie racetrack, and he invited Jack along. And he would send the hookers over to place the bets, and they'd come back. And he's 2,000 <laughs> here, 4,000 here. 
Jack says, when the gate opened and the horses ran, he said, there goes my trumpet, my harp, <laughs> there goes... <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is in showbiz. It's so what are you going to do tonight? I'm going to start off with an original song that I wrote called What If. It's a waltz about being able to actually talk to someone that you see passing down the street as opposed to being afraid of crossing over that barrier uh, and breaking down the wall of communication. Good. All right. Well, here's the original, Marcus Kohler. Thanks. Aggressively grow. And what if I, if I made, you smile? made you smile? Could we pretend to relax and be friends for a while? But I don't know who you are, and that frightens me so. Girl, I can never know who you are. But what if I made you laugh? Then maybe we could suspend all this tension at last. And what if we share? Wonderful, Marcus. That's wonderful. And you know, it, it, we should also mention Joey Barron is the sound guy here, who is a recording engineer for uh, uh, one of our great uh, recording guys, Tony Camilla, who produced a lot of hit records. And Joey's the sound man there, and he put all this together. So it's very, it's 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 hard to get good sound to come out of small speakers. And most people have the usual little television thing or the thing in your ear. But when you got a Bose system, it's a whole another story. Uh, and it's, it's, you're lovely. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a lovely trio, and, and I appreciate having you here tonight, Marcus. Thank you. Oh, thanks for and having us. Jim Brochure was a great actor. Except he was born in 1978. I yeah, know. Makes me 19, Ill. I have frozen food older than you. <laughs> <laughs> When's dinner? <laughs> it's peas. And, and, and in Buffalo, all of your food is frozen. <laughs> That's all year right. round. All right, so we're going to bring Derek D. out here in just a second. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to take a break first. We've got to take these breaks because what happens is we try to put commercials in here so that somebody pays for this stuff. You know? uh, that would be a good idea. That's yeah. a concept. I and like we, that. it's, it's an idea. You know, I mean, sounds, by the end of the like show, you're going to have good abs. That's it. 
We've I got want a lot that of machine. Nice push. I'm I tired want that of machine. them using my body <laughs> in these commercials. <laughs> They're super important. I'm tired on that of note, it. Stop on that it. Note, Just we'll stop. be right back. know who you are. What am I made you laugh? Then maybe we could suspend all this tension. BAM's Auto Body, located on Liberty Avenue in Ozone Park, is a one-stop shop equipped with all the latest technologies to fix your car or truck right the first time. We work with all major insurance companies and specialize in collision, theft, and vandalism repair. Call anytime to check your vehicle status. Speak with our dedicated and knowledgeable staff. We offer a 100% written guarantee on all repairs and a lifetime warranty on all paint repairs. BAM's Auto Body, we'll get your vehicle fixed no matter what. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ Market Site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Funniest thing tonight is that we have Goldie DeVere here and her husband has to sit in the background <laughs> and stay off the air. Oh, and he's so upset about <laughs> it, too. It's grinding him, isn't it? He took it's his really, tie off. You know why? Yeah. And he can't talk. We don't want I him screaming know. in the background. I know. The worst thing to do to Paul is say, shh. <laughs> Because Go, we had a lot of years of, uh, of, of being over at NBC. Sure. Jay and I, yeah. there's Paul, of course. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's relegated to a court. You're going to be outside holding the speakers with these people. <laughs> Hi, everybody. There's hey hordes guys. of people. Oh, look yeah. at this. Put the camera on those guys. Wow. you got to move over in the light. Yeah, so okay, get over in the light. Go, Go in the light. Go over there. Follow the light. <laughs> Into the light, children. Go Into the light. the light. Go towards the light. Into the or, light. Wait, over there. The How about that side? Over there. Now go into that light. You're going to make them laugh. I know. I've made them crazy for years. Oh, Do you know these there. people, Let them be. These the people travel there. together see, all the time. They are the extras. Light. I know. And they travel in a clump. You didn't get the memo tonight <laughs> to be out go. there? Okay. Hi, people. No. Hi. How are you, everybody? See you later. See, we really, really are in Times Square. We really are. Yeah, I know. Just in case. You can't believe it, can no, you? You can't believe we made Broadway. We made Broadway. Broadway. I joined the yeah. Army on the way over. this bad routine we've been doing for years. See, you don't have to be good anymore. You don't? No. No, you just, you just have to look good. Else says you have to show up. And all you got to do is be a hunk. You have to look good. You don't good. have to have any talent. Thank it's you, really like Mario Lopez and uh, right. Thank you so what the hell's his name? Ryan Seacrest. Okay. And, right. Yeah. And of the women. Yeah. Right. Or, you or can wear, a, wear a tie and jeans like Jenny, right. uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Tie and jeans? Degenerate. What's her oh, name? Oh, Ellen. Ellen. Ellen, yeah. Ellen Degenerate. Degenerate. <laughs> no wonder where I got the I line. never did get that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that. You're That's not supposed thing. to get that. You're no. not her audience. That's right. Uh, you know, speaking of, of I speak nothing, no English here. I know. <laughs> well, I don't, like... I don't want to sound like I'm putting anybody down, no. but I am. Yeah. Well, I just don't want to sound <laughs> like it. That's why it right. sounds that way. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit envious of their money and their position, and I want to have what we'll they have. There. Get there. But I'm not willing to do what they do. You no. know, I'm not going to go around and put on men's things and pick up girls. Oh, I see. Wait a second, I'm a little confused. That's what Ellen Isn't does. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to train you Are the you right way. Are you out there, folks? Are they they're hanging around for Spider-Man waiting for him to fall or something? <laughs> this is not the show on stage. The show That's is done without a net. Uh, you know, uh, the, the thing that, that we're going to bring out here now is, uh, is what Ellen is famous for. And I, I, yes. I, I, mean, I don't like I know she's very talented. I'm just having, Play. having fun with Play. her. Uh, but, you know, she, she has uh, a real good sense of what's, what today's technology is. Mm -hmm. And she's playing off the Internet feeds. Mm -hmm. And one of them is YouTube. You know, where right. I have a lot of things on YouTube. You know, right. I, of course, you know, lately I've had my YouTubes tied. <laughs> but, uh, but there are some things that are... Derek D is coming out just a minute. I, I know. He's going to show us some of his YouTube stuff. That's what I'm talking it's about. It's getting to a point. What? We're running out? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Oh, she... Der Derek D is a guy. So we were confused. Why? I said we'll bring him out here in a minute. But I want to tell everybody about this thing that, uh, that we're feeding off of, this monster. Mm -hmm. Yes, this the internet. internet. Yes, the See, internet. See, what we're doing, now, this, I want to, I, I just, I like, I'm like Cy Sims. An informed viewer is a good viewer. An informed no, uh, I don't know if I agree with that all the time. No, no, you've got you to go with this. We're okay, in an enlightened ahead. period of life. Go ahead. Now, not everybody has stuck this far with this show. If you've stuck this far to watch this show, you have some brains. If you like the show, you have some taste. If, you don't, if, you, if we lost you, I don't care. We lost you anyway. What the hell do I care? There you go. You're gone. There you go. But let's, let's they go didn't with, belong here anyway. They don't belong here. Right. Yeah, and then let them go find some dip and, uh, and have some fun. Uh, what I want to do here... We're not having fun here? Excuse yeah, me. This is a different... Is, I want to present some things on the air here. Okay. I, what, I'm taking a long way around. I'm like my mother now. <laughs> uh, what, what's happening is we are shortening the entertainment value by only going for the bites. Even the president the other day said something about sound bites. He used the expression. Everybody's playing to that. I don't play to that. You know, homie, don't play that game. No, it's the long form. No, you, you I want, go for I the like, reality. And, you know, and even Jim Brosher here is one of our great actors in New York. He just happens to be talented. And uh, we were talking about how this show is got something where the other shows don't do it anymore. Substance. Well, I, I, I have to say to him that I compared him to Jack Parr who was the, right. one of the all-time greats right. at this because That's Jack right. Parr listened, Jack Parr had conversations, right. and Jack Parr was thought-provoking, just as Joey is. It's not the typical talk show, and, and you're right. People turn in to be engaged and to hear your thoughts and to hear what we have to think. And if a laugh or two comes along, it's marvelous. Right. But you're a thought-provoking man. Well, thank you for, for that. But I, 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 the point I was going to make is that the short form it's not all there is. Right. You know, I mean, well, like Peggy Lee sings. Is that right, all there right. is? But no. But you're taking us back to that era right. of Jack Parr, where we're not, where everything isn't done in 30 seconds. But we're dear, getting a chance to right. And I'm going to sound like him now. Yes. We're not taking dear you back. Heart. We're taking you forward. Well. Because the forward comes motion. Comes full circle. Is, is you have to really, here's, here, I have arguments with friends of mine about the economy. And, and this is a very famous one I have with my friend Barry Bergman, who, you know, you know Barry. Yes. Barry always comes to the point of, well, if people didn't like it, they wouldn't watch it. If they didn't like it, they wouldn't buy it. If they didn't like it, if they, I said, Barry, there's a leadership that has to be exercised, mm -hmm. there's mentoring, right. or these idiots wouldn't be lined up around the block for Magnolia cupcakes. <laughs> what the hell are you thinking? They're, they get in a line because they see a line. They right. think they're supposed to have it. Right. Now, that's okay. It's by association, right. and we are looking for identity. But there's a part that I want to address. And that's this. When we have discussions about what's going on, it's not about what is. It's what created it. I, I like to go to the core issues of some right. things. You know, it's not enough that I'm an alcoholic. Why am I an alcoholic? But not because of genetics and DNA. <clears throat> but, you know, what, what, what is the setup? What's the setup? The root cause. And, the root, and that's yes. the thing that I'd like to say about our economy, for instance. You know, I'm not going to go into the whole thing now, but what's the setup? What's, what is the setup for this economy? Why are we where we are right now? How did we get here? We're here. But how did we get here? Why are we having this nuclear reaction, reactor reaction? What are we doing with this? You know, what are we trying to say? That we're afraid of explosions? That we're afraid of God? 
because of a, na a natural act? What are we saying? What's the root cause? Are we, are we tampering with something we shouldn't be tampering with? Could be. Yeah, I mean, what, that's, I, mean, I mean, that's a discussion. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not making right. a judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, right. what, why don't we... This is what we should be talking about. We should about. be talking about that, right, right. You know, about, about what, what, what creates something so that we can get out of it. Mm -hmm. Not, not the, uh, Bernie Madoff's in jail and stole from every Jew he ever met. That's not the point. Everybody knows that. But why was he setup? allowed to do uh, no. that? Why How did that was happen? He, not well, not only it? was he allowed, that would be a good discussion, yeah. too. But, but what brought that on? What, what created the environment so that he could do that? Greed. greed right? Well, yeah. And greed. What, what creates that personal kind of greed where everybody else be damned, it's all about me? Yeah. That happened about 15 years ago, 20 years ago. It, it did. And now we're seeing the root, the root result of it. So the seeds are planted. Please, seeds were planted a while ago. Well, so I mean, that's the reason I brought all this up. Uh, uh, thank you, Jim. Is because we're in a place now where we st have to start talking this way. And not the other way about yeah. left or right, mm -hmm. old or young, mm -hmm. black or white. Yep. This is crap. I mean, we're wasting our time talking about other countries fighting. We're sending our soldiers to every place where the cops of the world. I don't know why. I don't know what we're the police. Who, who said uh, we're the police force the of the world? Of the world right. What are we handing out parking tickets to right. Libya? <laughs> what the hell are we doing here? Could you I move mean, your tank? We're having alternate side of the street tank parking today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's bring this kid out here before before we lose the show entirely. Yeah, really. I, I took a, a left turn here. Well, this right. is the I only place you can have... Well, ago, no, but that's okay, Joey. It's all right. Yeah, this is the only place you can have discussions right. like that anymore. Yeah. I, so. hope so. I, hope, I hope there are more of them. Here's Derek D. Derek, come on out here. Join in this craziness tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's going to be soft. Derek, Derek, say, what Derek did I lives do? off of sound bites. What's up, everybody? Hi, Derek. How are you? How are you doing? Sound bite man. Good to meet you. <laughs> come on, let's hug it oh, out. I'll get up. I'll I'll get let's hug it out. Come on, come on, come on. Bring up the good stuff. Derek. Oh, Joey. Derek D. How, How are, are you? you? Nice to meet Jim you. Jim Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Goldie DeVere. All right. Hi, hey, Goldie. Derek. Paul's nice wife. How are you? How are you? How are you? Is that everybody out there? Jay no. Sorensen. They're like, who the hell is this guy? I don't know. Yeah. No, no, no. They do that with me every night. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know his name. All right, so now, now you have, you're, you're a master of this. Uh, I'm a master. Of these? Universe. Short Bites. Right. Of that. All right. Now, Jersey Shore is one of your films. Oh, it was right? a, uh, it was a. Parody. Yes, it was a parody that I was in on. A, it was online, and it was for a show called The Key of Awesome. And uh, I think I love it's, that name. It's a great name. Is yeah. that an online show? It is. It is. My buddy Mark Douglas uh, is the is the he's the head guy over there. And then Lauren Francesco, you had on your show sure. not too long ago. She's uh, the girl in that parody that I'm making out with profusely. She's and she's very, smoking hot, so that works. And she's <laughs> yeah. very, very smart, and she has more hits than anybody who looks like that. Yeah, she has a lot of hits. That show gets a lot of hits, and plus when you look like that, you get a lot of hits. <laughs> <laughs> Hit on as well as on hits. On the computer oh, as well, that, yeah. That's a good yeah. new pickup line, isn't yeah. it? Hey, I'm doing a parody. <laughs> Funny you should talk about pickup lines, because I have a show coming out with Lauren online called Daily Pickup Line. Where do we go for that? And uh, dailypickupline.com. And, so uh, you named the show after the location, right? Where you can go for it? Right, exactly. It takes you just right to YouTube, dailypickupline.com. But is everything on YouTube? I mean, it's like... Yeah. Oh, I mean, nowadays, now. a lot of things are. Um, I'm even on there. Is YouTube bigger than Facebook? Mm, you know, it's, it's, two different it's things. close. It's different. It's different. It's different, yeah, because yeah, Facebook comes... I think it's YouTube and then Facebook. I think it's that close. And uh, But yeah, I host a show called Fastlane Daily, fastlanedaily.com. It's a... It's a car show, but it's funny and about cars, and we shoot right over there in the MTV yeah. building. What do you use? What cars? I mean, new new cars or classics? We talk. Or it's news, so we talk about. Uh, we could talk about you know, Lindsay Lohan crashing her, you know, CLK 63 whatever, or we could talk about you know, supercars coming out. We talk about anything that has to do with cars in a funny and informative way. Which Did is you see the thing on YouTube about James Dean? It was his last interview. Oh, no. And in that interview, he talks about how he tells kids to not speed, oh. and he died a week later. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's right. Did you see that thing? I didn't yeah. see it on YouTube, but I'm sure there's, I mean, everything. I just saw it on classic YouTube yeah. yesterday. And, you know, he was a great, I, well, first of all, he's a good driver, but yeah. I guess not that good, huh? <laughs> well, oh, jeez. Uh, Are you a car guy? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a car guy in many ways. Yeah. First of all, I had the distinction of driving the hydrogen car. Which one? The GM Equinox, okay. which was invented by General Motors. It's phase six of the hydrogen cars. So that Toyota's on phase one. Are you talking about the Chevy Equinox? Yeah. Which is the truck? Well, no, that's, they renamed it. 
Oh, okay, that was a while. A couple okay. of years ago, oh, okay. when uh, when they had the president of the company, the chairman of General Motors, who was fired by Obama, Bob Lutz came up. No, no not Lutz. Uh, uh, Wagner. Wagner. Yeah, yeah, when he he came out, Rick, uh, he came out with a with three cars, the CTS, the Volt, and the Equinox. The right. Equinox is a hydrogen car. Yeah, I had it for ten weeks. Everybody loved it. Zero emissions. Seven bucks to fill the thing. Oh yeah, I mean, to, I mean, it's it's the only thing left now. Yeah. And I don't know why we don't go to that. Screw plugging your car into your wall and, and volting it. Volt you know, and, hydrogen. And also a hybrid. What for? Hydrogen's a very, you know, it's, it's a viable source. I mean, my producer was just out in California driving a, uh, a new Mercedes, a hydrogen, a hydrogen Mercedes truck. Wow. All right, well, let's go with this for a minute. Okay. The, the dirigible, the, the Hindenburg from New Jersey, which right. was, was crashed. It's by me. Was it's not, it was not an accident because of hydrogen. It was reported that because it was, to be, it was put out as a PR campaign from Hitler as the starship that it was mm -hmm. uh -huh. and they were embarrassed that they had mechanical flaws in the design yeah. and they blamed it on hydrogen that's the so it was actually mechanical story. flaws in the design not, not the hydrogen one. so people think hydrogen Explosions. they think dirigible they think right. explosion yeah it's an evident series but it's hydrogen safe it's water right a lot of people say that and a lot of people say like oh you know a little spark your car will blow up well you get a spark in your gas tank your car's gonna blow up too gas is volatile as well so i mean it's always a it's an ongoing debate with you know all these yeah, other because they don't want to sources. do it they don't want they don't want to lose the money yeah a lot of people make money off of oil they make money off of really? fossil fuel. Really? Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. And you know what? And there are investors. They don't know which way to go. They want to fill their tank, but they don't want to pay for the gas, yet they want to own the stock. Right. They don't know what the hell way to go. No. And that's why you have a country which is a, which is a double standard. Yeah. And one of the reasons why we're having trouble is because nobody's willing to surrender anything. You've got to give up something. Yeah. You know, it's oh. like going to you with a full glass saying, well, let me have some of that fresh wine you have there. And you say, yeah, we'll empty some of it out. You've got to let some out first. Yeah. But nobody wants to give up anything. That's the nature of it. It is. Right. Well, I mean, I think we're slowly moving towards alternative fuels, slow, so slowly, where we're actually not really well, getting there. Well, I would like us to use up all the oil and then have alternative And oil. then have to, be yeah. forced. The hell with it. Yeah. Charge a quarter of a gallon for gasoline, nice. burn it out, and we'll find something. That's it. All right. You know, since hey. when are we out of anything on this planet hey, except we charity? We adapt. Ah. Well, we're out of charity. We're out of we're out of compassion. We're out of kindness. We're out of understanding. We're you out get of fired yeah. up, Joe. Yeah. You like it? Well, because I, I I'm tired of all the crap on television. Yeah. I, I figure I if I'm going to have a television show while it lasts, I'm going to put something on it that people need to hear. Yeah, like you, me, Jimbo, Goldie. Well, yeah. and right. I didn't get your name. Big J. Big J. And we have a clip of yours. Which all right, what are we show? watching? I don't know. What are we going to show? Is it the Jersey Shore thing? Is it? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Jersey so Shore. All right, yeah. So this is your parody on that wonderful show that uh, insults every Italian God ever created. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I am 100% Italian guy, and I do live by the beach in Jersey, and we're not like that. Just yeah, FYI. we're not. Oh, we're right. not like that. <laughs> <laughs> just letting you know. So, not at all. Uh, <laughs> so what are we calling this thing? Oh, it's just the uh, Jersey Shore parody. All cool. right. Yeah. Here's Derek D's parody. The Guido's party all night, and then they try to score on the Jersey Shore. During the day, they gotta work at the t-shirt store. What the hell is that noise? Yo, it's Mike, but they call me the situation Cause my abs never go on a vacation Some people think that I'm a jerk off Cause I look like Rambo with my friggin' shirt off And we that see me, they get all turned on Cause I spend all day at a tanning salon I tweeze, I tan, I shave my chest Man, don't try to act like you're not impressed It's me, Snooky, I crave attention I wear sequin skirts and hair extensions I like to hook up, but don't call me loose When I eat a pickle, I suck out the juice I'm looking for love without much luck Hey, you took our drink Yo, Snooky Duck! Duck. Oh, oh, what the, oh my god, you oh. do not hit a You're girl. a grown oh man. I've never seen that before. What kind of you grown man? On that the Jersey man. Shore, they get in fights and then they hook up for sport. On the Jersey Shore, they must be crawling with herpes, gonorrhea, and warts. They call me Jay Wow and I'm a man eater. I only like guys who wear white beaters. I drink Giga bombs and get destroyed And grind on guys who are unemployed I'm DJ Paulie and I raise the roof I put gel in my hair till it's bulletproof My beats are sick, I don't mean to brag 
Check out my contacts, Italian flags. I get my hair cut every single day. I dance with my bros in a manly way. We know several dances, including the jump, the ab display, and the Guido fist pump. Go, 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 go. Oh, holy you never hit a girl. Oh, never hit a girl. Never hit a girl. Jersey Shore girls get drunk and hook up with every Vinny, Petey, and Paul. On the Jersey Shore, they get up the next morning and pretend that they don't recall. On the Jersey Shore, they get naked in hot tubs and drink themselves into a stupor. Their tans are so orange, they look like a bunch of Oompa Loompas. Yo, did you just call Super Loompas? Not cool, boss. Not cool. Oh! oh! <laughs> well, I guess you have no lack of Snooky. <laughs> no, no. Well, we, I mean, <laughs> great Bruce. That, I wish there was a lack of Snooky. I wish there was really. a, a major lack of Snooky. That uh, that is a terrible, terrible show. It so makes it makes us look. You did this in Coney Island. You did a parody of Jersey in Coney Island. Well, no, no. We shot that right in New York City, but where the the guy playing guitar was, that was in Coney Island, I believe. I wasn't there for that. Well, you've done a good job. It's funny. Of it. I mean, it's, it's fun. Very good. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I, I, I can't take. I mean, the the guy playing guitar, playing Bruce Springsteen, he wrote the song. I just helped out with some of the lyrics, and that was about it. Can and you make any money doing this stuff? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you pay for that. I may have to give this up and go to a day job. That's yeah. it. And my, my show I host <laughs> right over here, parodies. I get I get paid for it too. You could do you a know? parody of the show. Could. Yeah. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Now, Wendy, <laughs> let's get the show done before you. We have your host right before here. Before you make fun of it, let's make it a hit. Here's your host. <laughs> no, you know, we got a little bit of time to get this thing off the ground. We've got about a week. Yeah. <laughs> well, how long have you been shooting for? Like two months now, right? No, nah, we've been here, I think, seven or eight weeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this thing's going to stay on forever because I'm mean. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> hey, I, you know what? I heard Howard Stern talking about you the, yeah. Uh, yeah. the other day. He was uh -huh. saying. Where was he? Was at, you guys were at the dinner, and I no, think he was he, saying that I live in Spanish Harlem, and I'm at the Ponce de Leon. Oh, bank. the bank! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, now, "How can a guy who's as famous as me, for as many years as I have had all of this yeah. fame and money, live in Spanish Harlem? What an insult that is!" Well, he he does that to everybody. I, I no think. kidding. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give him like a cheesecake or something? I gave him a cheesecake. Yeah, I think. I, and yeah, I, I should just have thrown it at him. <laughs> I just remember hearing that and be like, "Oh, that's the that's the show I'm going on." Oh, that's funny. No, it's funny. He, he, you know, uh, you, you come to a point in your life where you realize that everybody's got some shtick. Oh, totally. And let them all do whatever they're doing. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't even mind that Andy Rooney is ready to kick the bucket in. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, well. he's going to die in the middle of one of his routines on the show. Yikes. Oh, that wouldn't be nice. Did well, you ever think it's about... It's not nice. I mean, but it's, uh, the guy's like 100 years old. Yeah, he's old as hell. Yeah. I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, hey, how you doing? Are they ever going to retire? Dust. <laughs> yeah. But it's time icon. to give it up. He's, he's got money. Yeah. Dude, I'll take over that. Well, you know, the, the biggest travesty in all of this is when you, you think you're in it for the money, but you're not. Right, Jim? You've never been in it for the money. <laughs> never been in it for the money. People don't go into show business for the money. What are we going to it for? Because we for love the it. the love of it. It's because it's fun. I don't know another profession that's as fun. I mean, yeah. when I was a kid growing up, I had idols, and my idols became my friends. Mm. Who, that Money doesn't translate to that, yep. you know? And you get to We're very lucky. Cool shows like All Night with Joey Reynolds. That's right. Well, and you watch, know, you're and watch Snooky parodies. Right. You, you know, this guy here, you can tell he's very smart, right? <laughs> there's a very Paul Rudd quality about yeah, there's him. A, yeah, there's. You know, I mean, you know, we know you're, you're not done with it yet. See, I, I mean, no, I can I'm tell on the move, man. I, I'm moving. And you know what? You're going to be one of those guys. A little snotty, but it's... Oh, <laughs> but that's okay. Oh. In a nice way. You know, I, I, could, I could give you a couple of names of people, and just I'm going to throw out a name, but I worked with him at a movie called Kentucky Fried Movie, but I did the first movie with him, John uh -huh. Landis. Okay. And the first movie was, and you'll never guess what it was called, it was called Schlock. Schlock. And it was about a news reporter as a monkey who was an ape that reported the news. That's about he right. made this really primitive film. And then, of course, he went on to do Thriller and, right, right. and Animal House. And uh, uh, I think, uh, well, my favorite would be American Werewolf in London. Oh, that's good. Uh, so he, he made a lot of great films. Uh, Trading Places was his. Mm -hmm. I mean, John's great. He was the yeah. first He's film director to go yeah. to China, too, and make an American film director to go to China. Really? Yeah. Nice. But he was like you. You know, he was a little crazy and squirrely and I'm crazy around. and squirrely? Well, he came up. You I'm came Italian. Up, I mean, but you, <laughs> and he was Jewish. <laughs> but you came up with these things like this, you know, that are really offbeat, and they're funny. They're funny. Oh, well, they're well, thanks. Cool. I mean, like I said, that wasn't, the, the Jersey Shore thing wasn't all me. Uh, 
But but yeah, I mean, I do a lot of stuff on YouTube. I have my own, you know, my own channel. The daily pickup line things coming up, and then so what's your own channel down. called again? In case anybody wants to go to it, what's it called? It's YouTube.com/slash/comedicd. But you're better off just going to my website, DerekDeAngelis.com. DerekDeAngelis.com. Yeah, I did have DerekD.com, but some. Uh, Sorry. Ooh. So sorry about that. Company. Get the Bible. <laughs> company. Get like, the Bible, please. Basically squatted on my on my on my uh, website and, then and stole to, it from me. Yeah. But I'm getting it back in April, I think. Sorry yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. No, that's quite all right. We, we have to take a break me, anyway. Beep, beep. Oh, it, believe me, it'll be more than bleeped. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here and then we're gonna come back with Therese Jenico and she's great. <laughs> You're gonna love her. Yes. And the band and Barry Levine is here too. Barry Levin. <laughs> you know Barry, don't you? I know Barry very well. Do you like him? I love him. Very Good. talented. He can man. stay then. <laughs> All right, we'll be, we'll be right back. Love it. celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. Yeah. It's where Cat oh Greenleaf yeah. gets people talking. What? what? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Tell me something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm grandma. I'm, a... <laughs> I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I'm an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at five. We're all over town. I'm fine, good, how are you? Good to have you on the show and with Barry Levitt. Barry Levitt, right there, yeah. the maestro. He's the guy who has that showroom with the couches, right? <laughs> That's a different guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how many Levitts are there? I, I'm assuming there are quite a few. It's a very common name. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Anthony if you're Italian. Right. Everybody's middle name is Anthony, right? Right. Mine is too. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Gineco is, you know. Well, you have a, a, a good band with you. I have. You know, Barry, Barry's one of our best arranger and conductors yes, in, sir, in New is. York. Yes, sir, he is. Yes, sir, he is. And it's always a privilege to, when he's around, you know the show's first class. Well, uh, good. Thanks. You, you always, kicked me up I a notch, Barry. When I, I see love him, him, I know that there's going to be a good performance. He discovers good talent as well. And I, and I saw him come in tonight, and I knew then we were going to have a good band. Well, we and do have a good band. We have, we have six of the eight pieces. Normally, we have eight up at the uh, Iridium, where I perform on the last Tuesday of every month. Yeah. We have an eight-piece band with bongos, and uh, i got a guitar player who's out of town now. So, but I brought you the, the best six. 
Well, they have a 30-piece band upstairs at Ellen's Diner. You know, I've heard. But it's on tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so downstairs is the Iridium Jazz Club where Les Paul's trio is right. every Monday, too. That so is. You, when are you there? I'm when? We're the last Tuesday of every month. We've been there for two years. This Good. is our anniversary, two-year anniversary this month. And uh, we're going into an open-ended run for th year three. So they just keep having us back. It's well, you're a terrific, terrific entertainer. So Thank you, you so want to give the guys names here? I always like putting musicians' Absolutely. names on because they get even with you later. Yeah, no, I, I love these guys. are. Uh, Who are they? They're so sweet for being here with us. This is Tom Hubbard on the bass. Hello, Tom. And there. Joe Eva on the drums. Joe. Jumping Joe. <laughs> Got Mark Miller on trombone, and he also arranged the pieces we'll be doing this evening. Hello. And that's Jeff. Uh, brand new, Will Ford. Yes, Jeff's just joining us for the first time this evening, and thankful that he's here. And there's Cliff Lyons on tenor saxophone. All right, now there's people outside, you know. And I've as seen, you, as yeah. we go on, because it's, it's going to be better weather, there will be more people. All right. And then we'll go outside with a cup. <laughs> good, good. And everybody walks out with a couple of dimes, and we're so, happy. So, uh, do we use your name, or is there a name for the whole group? We here? call it Therese Janeco and her little big band. Okay, go ahead. All right, You're thanks. On. Let me get out of the way, guys, so you can play. outside you can't right, hear guys. them applaud great arrangement they're, they're busy wonderful dancing. you know whenever you hear horns like that you kind of get your own horns up <laughs> it's kind of cool I like I, I love horns I think it's great it's real exciting and and for an older guy <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna take another break and then we're gonna have D David Selig's coming out right and and I, I think uh, we're gonna have a wine tasting thing tonight what I, I uh, couldn't I well, you will <laughs> all right force <laughs> we'll, me we'll force you <laughs> be right back if you're ever gonna kiss me It had better be tonight While the mandolins are playing And stars are bright If you're ever gonna tell I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck if you're like me, you probably don't have a lot of free time to exercise and keep yourself in shape. 
For me, the answer is the Ab Glider from Proform. I can't tell you how much I love this amazing machine. It's a great fat burning cardio workout, too. And it's fun. Unlike other ab machines, the Ab Glider combines circular and crunch motions for a fast, fun workout of your entire midsection. You engage more muscles, get a better cardio workout, and burn twice the calories of other ab machines. I went from an 11 to a size 4. 20 inches total. It's really easy and it's fun. With this offer, you'll get an onboard workout computer, Elizabeth's 3-Minute Rapid Results DVD, and her Amazing Abs Instructional DVD, plus her Amazing Abs Eating Guide, a $159 value, free. Try the Ab Glider now for 30 days, risk-free, for as little as $14.95. If you're not totally satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. You can't find a better way to get better abs at a better price, and getting started is easy. Just call or go online to proform.com. Are you holding the remote right now? It's nice to be in control, isn't it? To fast forward to the good parts? Oh, hold on. We're getting to the good part. If you're receiving a structured settlement from a lawsuit, you know it is not easy to wait for payments, especially when it could be 10 or 20 years before you collect all your money. What you may not know is that you can skip ahead and receive a lump sum of cash now. Call CBC Settlement Funding for a free, no obligation offer about your structured settlement. Whether you access all or just a portion of your future payments, we put you in control so you can fast forward and collect your money now. If you need cash now, call the number on your screen and find out how CBC Settlement Funding can help. We'll guide you through the process so you can take control of your finances and get your money faster. Call CBC Settlement Funding today. So David Selig is here. I, I guess you're a tax collector. Uh, no, sir. I'm a tax practitioner. Now, what's the difference? Well, I represent individuals when they're in trouble with the government. Isn't that a tax collector? You know, a tax collector would work for the government to collect as much money as they conceivably could. Don't be could. foolish. Nobody works in the government. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you work on our side, then? Yes, sir. Yeah, and you try to save us money. and Yes, sir. And you get us ready for the grease. Absolutely, and uh, essentially the government tries to collect as much money as they legally can, not as much as they're legally entitled to. And what we do is we try to defend our clients to make sure they only pay what they're legally obligated to pay. Do you know Steve Zellig? The name's very familiar. Have you ever met before? Not to my knowledge, sir. Well, he's right here. <laughs> Now, you know, Stephen here is, uh, 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 Steve Zellin is an accountant, a CPA. What side are you on? Are you on the government side or his side? I'm on his side. Sir, oh. I believe I made a mistake. This gentleman and I are in the same office building. I misunderstood the way you pronounced his last name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, thought, I thought you didn't know that he was a singing CPA. No, no, absolutely. I know him, and uh, he just gave me one of his CDs. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he does a lot of children's concerts. And I think also teaching, right? You're teaching. That's right, yeah. I teach uh, accounting at Long Island University. And because and I'm a real CPA, I have a lot of credibility with my number songs. You know, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you two guys uh, get along? That's what I was trying to figure out. Well, I handle, you know, the, uh, the, like the everyday person uh, and the small business. And, and this guy goes after, the, like, the big fish. And he, maybe. Well, I have to say, uh, you don't have to be a big fish to get in trouble with the government. Uh, it can really happen to anybody. And the real issue is if an individual believes that they're being uh, wrongly assessed a liability or they took a position that they believed was correct or their accountant believes was correct uh, and the government denies that position, then they have to be defended. So we actually work together. We're on the same side. but different stages of the process. Now, Jim, did Zero Mostel have a tax problem? 
You're throwing this to me? Yeah, I, I just wonder, <laughs> did he have a tax problem? I think he had every problem in the world except a tax Didn't problem. Didn't have that one, right. But I, I think that David is right that uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the IRS go for the minnows rather than the big fish sure. because they can't defend themselves as much as the corporations. And Do you think the tax system is fair? I do. Uh, I have to well, tell then you. I have nothing else to well, say to you. <laughs> I, I, I know it's an unpopular position, uh, but the Internal Revenue Code really is a, a fair system. The problem is it gets complicated and frequently people see things in it that are just not applicable to them. We're seeing that with some celebrities now who are claiming to be farmers and they're really taking advantage of the good people of Colorado. Uh, I don't believe the celebrities are really responsible for this as much as the people who are representing them. Like, for instance, if you have a person like Steve, he might say to an individual, you're not entitled to that. And in response to this, they'll fire him and get some sycophant who will just be a, a yes man and say, this is the way we want to go. But if he's fired, he's got his guitar. He can play on top of Old Smokey right in Washington Square. Oh, his life is wonderful. You don't know what he plays. <laughs> oh. Steve, you want to do the tax song? No, sure, Joey. All right. <laughs> Steve Zellin. Now, Stephen is a CPA. He's called the singing accountant, the singing CPA. And he has made up a tax song. I was sitting in my office reading the taxation rules. When a brand new client walked in, said he heard that I was cool. I'm a few years late in finding Uncle Sam wants my ass. So I told him to sit down, we can fix this fast. He asked me how many returns I'd filed with my own hand. And I said, listen, I have filled out every form in this here land. Filled out every form, man. Filled out every form, man. Before you were born, man. I've been well informed, man. Like a raging sore man, filled out every form. Complied with Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Delaware, Florida, Colorado, Georgia, Massachusetts, Idaho, Michigan, New Mexico, Indiana, Louisiana, Minnesota, Ohio, Kansas, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Alaska, Hawaii, New York, New Jersey, Kentucky, and Nebraska. Filled out every form, man. Filled out every form, man. Before you were born, man. I've been well informed, man. Like a raging storm man, filled out every form. And I've done Iowa, Connecticut, Illinois, North Dakota, South Dakota, Pennsylvania, Washington, and West Virginia, Maryland, both Carolinas, Maine, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Texas, Oregon, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Missouri, Wyoming, South Wisconsin, Virginia, and Montana. I have filled out forms for all states, including Nevada. Filled out every form man, filled out every form man. Before you were born man, I've been well informed man. Like a raging storm man, filled out every form. If they want federal tax, state tax, city tax, gift tax, sales tax, use tax, state tax, payroll tax, property tax, gas tax, Medicare, AMT, capital gains, transfer tax, and social security, luxury tax, in tax, school tax, kitty tax, excise tax, franchise tax, workers' compensation tax, filled out every form man, filled out every form man, before you were born man, I've been well informed man. Like a raging storm man, filled out every form. Give me your W-2s, dividends, stock statements, pensions, mortgage statements, unemployment, self-employment, stipends, travel meals, entertainment, bankages, gratuities, dependent care, and your health care, and donations to charity, IRAs, real estate, and your 401k. Give me everything you have, and I'll make sure you don't pay. Filled out every form, man. Filled out every form, man. Before you were born, man. I've been well informed, man. Like a raging storm, man, filled out every form, filled out every form. <laughs> <laughs> so David Selleck gets up in the morning, goes to the office, and Steve sings that as you raise the flag. Wonderful. And, and ring the bell at the end of the day, which, Jim, you did that here at NASDAQ. Didn't you ring the I bell? I did. We, we rang the closing bell right over there. Uh, the president of NASDAQ came down, and they, they tell you, uh, you have three minutes to speak. Now, now you're speaking to the world. This goes all over the world. And I said, now you tell me as I walk in, I had to, I couldn't I prepare a little bit to say to the world, you know? <laughs> Vini et Vinci. I, I should have had that song. I would have sung that. That was delightful. Thank you. You're great. Steve, Steve is great, and I love him very much, and I'm glad you're working together. You, you guys have a firm together? Uh, or, well, we no, so we actually work in the same building. Oh, just We're in a building. On separate floors. But you don't own the building together. No, sir. No. And uh, this is your busy season, isn't it? 
Uh, well, this is Steve's busy season. Uh, oh, your, yours will come later. Ours is really when uh, ever an individual either gets a notice right. or someone shows up and knocks on their door. Does that happen? Regularly. They knock on your Most door. Most certainly. But that's or, not the first thing. I mean, you get a no. letter first, right? Most usually they do. It really usually, depends on God. the facts and circumstances. Uh, we're seeing a lot more field visits where they'll leave a calling card uh, asking for the individual to call back. Ah. And that is very disquieting for most people. So when do we, uh, w when do we see your work? Is it on a website? Uh, well, sure. We have a website called truetaxhelp.com. Truetaxhelp.com. That's correct. Anyone who wants to come on and see what we do and various things, we invite them to do so. And Stephen Zellen. Is uh, thesingingcpa.com. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here tonight. I appreciate to the you, song. Jeremy. We're gonna need uh, we're gonna need you to write one about the show. That's right. Thank so. you for having me. It's a real pleasure. <laughs> You're by welcome. The way. You, you guys are great. We're gonna be right back. Let's take a little break. I don't want them to know that I cheated on my taxes. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over five million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-440-2181. 1-800-440-2181. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. I know what the IRS stands for. Which is? It really sucks. <laughs> it, it certainly can. Uh, Marcus Goldhaber is here. Now, Marcus is going to sing a song. Now, Marcus did not write No Moon at all. Just in case you wonder. <laughs> he, he wrote the other one he sang, but this one is not, this is not Marcus's song. Who wrote this, Marcus? What's his name again? David Mann and Red Evans. Red Evans and David Mann? Yep. Yeah, all right, come on. Let's, let, you're, you're great. I, I could sit and listen to you all night. I don't have to hear me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Here's right. Marcus Goldhaber. Even 
lightning bugs have dimmed their light The stars have disappeared from sight And there's no moon at all Don't make a sound, it's so dark Even Fido is afraid to bark What a perfect chance to park And there's no moon at all Should we want an atmosphere for inspiration, dear? One kiss will make it clear that the night is right and bright moonlight might interfere. No moon at all up above. This is nothing like they told us of. And just to think we fell in love and there's no moon. At all, shaba ba ba we, shaba zuta ye, zuta ba ye, zuta ba we, ano da ve, da da ze, shaba do do, shaba do da. We got a crowd of people out there. Give them a little shout out. Yeah. Give them a little. Give them a little zap. Oh, we they're got all, friends out there. They're all there them. waving. <laughs> all right. And of course, you know, with no moon at all, I guess the Twilight movies would never be a success with you around. <laughs> uh, the vampires. You saw the movies, right? Sure. Yeah. You don't have kids. If you got girls, you'll see the Twilight movies. There's a bunch of them in front now, just dancing and frolicking those. in the moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to have a crowd around, you know. It's always nice uh, to have uh, people in Times Square, 43rd and Broadway, where we're located doing our show. And Marcus, hey, where are you, where are you playing, Marcus? Where, where do we see you? So the next show is going to be uh, Wednesday. It's going to be an afternoon concert at St. Peter's Church. They do a lovely Midtown uh, oh, yeah, concert sure. series there. Yeah. It's called uh, 
uh, Midtown Jazz at midday, and it's at one o'clock. In the church itself, or down in the New church York? itself? Downstairs. Wonderful. Yeah. Downstairs, yeah. Yeah. Well, good. That's nice. that's uh, the priest passed away a couple years ago. You know, he Luther. It's a Lutheran church, and Is they it? yeah they began thing. concerts. He was a jazzaholic. Ah. He loved them. And he put them on every Sunday to begin with, right? Because right the wonderful New York Theater is down in the basement yeah, there. Right. That's, a, that's yeah. also a really good thing. Oh, it's a wonderful theater. Space. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah. Thanks for being here tonight. Who you did write that? Thank, thank you. Away. No Moon at All? Yeah. It was written by David Mann and Red Evans, 1947. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, you, you know, we got a couple of people here who uh, are, I don't know if you met Michael Yurich. I, I, I got to say his name right because I've been saying it wrong for years. Sorry. Haven't I? No, I haven't. Uh, so I was saying your, instead of your, your. I see. And, uh, and 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 we have a little wine tasting going on. Did you guys bring some wine tonight? A little bit. Of course we did. You did. Well, bring it's it out. Cello too. It's <laughs> in the back. Now, Marcus, I don't know if you drink wine, but you can you can have some of this. You can have mine. I don't drink. <laughs> but I've got I've got a lot going on in my head right now that's already. More than I need to drink. You got I'm, a nice Thunderbird there. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Yurtz is the is the president of Sherry Lehman, which is the best wine store and liquor store we have in New York. You Thank know. you. Just and, good and, to be back. And that's where I get my limoncello for my limoncello cheese. Oh cake. sure. That's right. That's right. Been going on for a long time. Who's this guy you brought with you? This is Kevin Zrelli. He's our good friend, secret weapon, almost well, not he, so secret weapon. This is the number one wine. Author in the country, if yeah, not the you world. Got, you got really expensive books. Absolutely. You know, I got four kids. I think one of them was outside. Actually, <laughs> 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 they're floating around. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Good to have you here Thank tonight. Thank you. This has been an honor. Actually, this has been and fascinating. You know, Jim Brochu. Well, Jim, nice pleasure. to see you. I've been watching both of you guys. My pleasure. Game, Jim. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Well, what you know, you, you got a me? bottle in your hand, so everybody wonders. Well, this is for me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Screw cap, by the way. That's the, the, that's, the way, that's the way everything's going right now. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? You mean there's no cork? You don't want to smell it either. You're kidding. <laughs> no, no this cork is, on this thing? No, yeah. actually, most, most wines, actually, if you take a look at New Zealand, uh, 90, hey, hey, 90, hey, 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 hey. Sure is. Thank 95% you. of all New Zealand wines are screw cap. 75% of Australian wines are screw cap. It's all going in that direction. Bad corks. It's a bad cork situation. Bad cork. Yeah. Please. I don't, Thank you, uh, sir. What kind of a wine is this? My, Mick, I'll let this you is a Pinot Noir from California, and it's a, it's a sample, hot off the presses, from the Russian River Valley. So we, now, am I doing this right? You're supposed oh, well, to do Kev, this? Kevin is the expert at that. I'm uh, good, I, but you he's know, great. You can do it any way you want. That's show this thing. on camera. Right. Okay. You're, 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 let's well, get near a camera here to show I mean, this thing. What no, he's thanks. doing is moving. Come on, guys. you got to put this on the air here. <laughs> he's moving the wine around on the glass. That's right. Is that what you're supposed to do? Uh, you get what you want a little aeration because you want to smell it because 95% of taste is smell. Everybody forgets about that. It's all about the olfactory. It's yeah. all about smelling. So what you want to do is get your nose in it. Well, how come I got drunk when I had colds? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just met you. I don't know. Next time I come on the show, I can help out in the therapy part. <laughs> Thanks. Now, this is uh, the complete wine course. So you're teaching us how to be a sommelier? Is that well, what Well, you is? know, I just finished a course. This is Windows on the World. I was at Windows on the World for 25 wow. years. Doing I, what? I was the wine director uh, for 25 years at downtown from the day it opened in, uh, in 1976 until September 11th. And we moved our wine classes right around the corner after September 11th to the Marriott Marquis. Then I joined forces with Sherry Lehman. We have a wine club together. We have a master class together. So this is the 25th anniversary edition. And the reason it's important to me is Windows in the World didn't have a 25th anniversary. It was scheduled yeah. for October, yeah. October of 2001, yeah. with the opening of the new wine cellar. So I'm very happy. 35 years now, I've been able to still continue the wine school, continue the name of Windows in the World with Sherry Lehman. It's been a great ride. Well, congratulations yeah. on not being in, not in, in the building, you know. I, mean, I, I always think about that because, you know, the bombing in 1993, some people forget about the bombing. Actually, Windows in the World was closed for three years. The World Trade Center opened, but Windows was closed for three years. But uh, we, can, we continue to uh, carry on, of course, until September 11th, where that sort of ended. So, but tough there's time. there's no better place to learn about wine in New York or any place else than your courses. Well, I thought the Bowery. Well, there, there is that. That's there where people that. start. We try, to, we, try to, we try to build them up, you know, from the Thunderbird into a... This is a Pinot Noir, by the way. So this is one of the nice, easy grapes. Uh, it's a light, easy wine. Everybody... Every, sideways. Did you see the movie? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Did Miles have some problems? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no our star so. there, you know, he got carried away. This was his grape variety. Yeah. He liked Pinot Noir. And so what, what all we're looking for in the wine is, is color. Pinot Noir should be light in color. It's great with food, all food. 
fish, it's even though it's a red wine, meat, poultry, whatever you want. But the smell, you know, when I smell this wine, you know what it's saying to me? Drink me. That's what it's saying. Drink me. <laughs> Let me have some, which I should do. I, I toast you. I'm sorry you guys don't have a glass. No, it's I, fine. I can taste on, on camera. Well, why would you have four people? Yeah, sure. You have four people and two glasses of wine? I was thinking the same thing. What is this, the last supper? Do you have another straw? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't, this ain't, this we have paper cups and coffee cups. We it has a lovely lot. insouciance. Uh, oh, exactly. Somebody told me that once to say it's very good. Yeah. Insouciance. Well, joie de vie. <laughs> yes, and joie de vie. My joie de vie has insouciance. You know what I want? <laughs> I can't follow that, you know that. Okay. But I want, I, this is, uh, in the United States, when I started 40 years ago, I started studying wines. They've been, they've been, Sierra Leone has been 77 years. 77 going on 78. The yes. mo most important thing I wanted to say is that um, uh, the United States of America is now the number one consumer of wine in the world. We have now surpassed Italy and France. And uh, people are, are starting to enjoy wine. And in, and oh, I think uh, every time I go out to dinner with somebody, they, they have wine. Uh, the, the biggest scam is the water. I know all you got to do is just ask for a Bloomberg on ice. Yeah. yeah. That's all you have to do. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, when you walk <laughs> out. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what I, mean, I meant. That fancy <laughs> water. I mean, that's a, in New York, the water's already good, I, I think. Absolutely. No, no. I don't drink, you know, but I go out to dinner. Last night I was at La Mela in Little Italy, and they have the Johnny Russo wine, right. which is his brand. And then they have the something they brought out. I don't know what it was. And they have a Chianti. Which reminded me of the Silence of the Lambs, you know. I figured. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that a couple of fava beans. beans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I don't drink. But I, I noticed that my friends know all about all this stuff now, which they didn't used to. They know the names. Yeah. Well, Chianti's been out there a long time. Uh, well, I mean, I when I was drinking and I was a good drunk, I would, uh, you know, I knew the name Ripple. <laughs> yeah, as you said, no, we got two. You got, you got Thunderbird, Thunderbird, you got yes. Ripple. There was Yago Sangria. There was Blue Nun. No, but I drank. I, 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 I drank Chateau Lafitte. Did you? Yeah, I did. Why didn't we know each other then? Had a little of that, yes. You know, it's, uh, right now that's out I of had, my price budget. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I had money back then. Oh, okay. <laughs> until I did the cocaine. Oh. It doesn't go good that with your wine. habit this of, is, this uh, is <coughs> uh, you know, Which uh, wine goes best with cocaine? I'm not going to yeah. touch. The, my mother's watching. The, okay, the guys? wine that you hear over at the Betty Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Why oh, did it I spend it, all my money on drugs? That's the wine. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But you guys have, a, uh, have a, a great series of books. Kevin Zraeli's books are world famous. I'm very, I'm very happy to say because I'm this a This one here is the complete wine course. Right. This is Windows <clears> on the World. <clears throat> Correct. And the other one there, that's this, that is, this just came out. Yeah, just what it is is a, a compilation of forty of the greatest wine the writers. Ultimate wine companion. Right. See, I would like this. It's stories. It's, it's yeah. you know, it's Irish Week. Because I'm, I'm Irish. not, I'm not going to drink, but yeah. I'm going to read about it. You know, you read about Robert Mondavi, how he learned how to taste from his mother. You know, stuff like that. These are like Irish short stories. Well, I'm Italian, so we remember when the Gallo mm -hmm. brothers were in the mob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I don't know. I'm not going to touch that one either. No, Francis, Can't go there. Francis Ford Coppola has a beautiful He's absolutely business going. A lovely Thank God. man. He was you in know, town. I mean, from the Godfather to the Godfather. He's right back there. Uh, uh, you'll see a lot of people you were talking yeah, about. Got Everybody's got, got their own wines. Yes. A lot of celebrities. Tom Seaver's out there. You know, you have uh, so, uh, Mario Ran Ready. and Randy Lewis. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you know, Joe, Joe Montana. And, uh, and of course, uh, and Mike, Mike Nichols, too. Absolutely. And a lot of these, uh, a lot of these golfers. And Elaine around. May. Elaine May is, is, well, you know, Mike Nichols is married. That was not his wife. I <laughs> married Diane Sawyer. <laughs> so are you, are you guys happy with this uh, show here tonight? You like this? It's great. It was it's so great. varied. I had no, you know, I mean, just to watch going from, uh, from blues to, I've never seen a singing CPA. I've never in my entire no, life. I've never seen a happy, and I shouldn't say they're that. They're usually not joyful. Yeah, this is this guy's playing. Getting they're happy rolling. when you're doing time and the check clears. <laughs> <laughs> New York late night without Joey Reynolds is wrong. So oh, I'm just so Mark. happy to see you back on the air and, 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 and to be back here because you know I'm a huge fan. We've been friends a while now, but I was before that. I'm a huge fan. So it's see, great. I hang around the front door of Sherry Lee, and I wear my. Bag lady clothes. <laughs> Do they give you anything? Humility. <laughs> okay, Gives me yeah, humility. All right, good. Good to be out there. 59th in Park. But so uh, Ke Kevin Zraley, now Z R A L Y. Look for his books. He's a wine expert. He's a. He's just absolutely the best, according to Michael, who never lies. I do not. Michael, That's true. Michael has uh, has the Sherry Lehman store, which is the finest liquor store in town. I mean, that's, really that's why we got together. It's sort of like down. affinity marketing. And it really is. It they works. have some really great is. stuff and uh, we work. We it works. He knows his stuff. He travels a lot. He's on all the cruise ships and also he's <laughs> sober, which we can't even believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll drink to that. Just so you know. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Have a toast. 
to Jim you, Bojo. Joey. Yeah. To you. Indeed. Thank you. Cheers to Joey. All right. Now we're going to take smooth. a break. We're going to take a break while these winos. Uh, <laughs> we we got another song coming here. All right. From me? No. We're going to. We have the band. Oh, from Teresa. To play. Oh, well, yeah. She's wonderful. Teresa's going to sing again. Well, let's take a break and we'll be right back on the uh, on the all night soiree. I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced, it targets your entire core upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques, all in one circular motion as it aerobically burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy, and takes just three minutes a day. And watch this. Simply remove the pin and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat burning bun and thigh machine. On the Ab Circle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the Ab Circle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds. I feel great and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the Ab Circle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, We'll send you Jennifer Nicole Lee's complete Lose Your Love Handle system, which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free. That's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab. You have nothing to lose but inches, so pick up the phone and call now. Call 1-800-709-1301 to try Absicle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your Absicle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. Like a very bad 12-step meeting. <laughs> we're, we're only at number eight, too. Yeah, tell me. Uh, Michael, Michael Yorch, uh, who has Sherry Lehman, has a great uh, store. And also his friend, who went to school with him, Kevin Zraeli, uh, who has the complete wine course, Windows of the World. And uh, Jim, we're going to be seeing your work. Jim Brochure is going to be where? Where do we see you next? Uh, my next stop for zero hours, four weeks in Toronto at the uh, Harold Green Jewish Theater. Then the Barrington stage, then next season, I'll come back as P.T. Barnum. Well, we'll see you on Broadway again. And well, of yes, course, sir. you come here anytime. Thank you. And, and uh, here's Therese Gineco and, and, of course, uh, the lovely Barry Levitt. And, uh, the we're Barry Levitt. Oh, yeah. With, with the, the band to take one, us out of here. And I want to I tell everybody what the name of my book is, which is also my sign-off every night. Let a smile be your umbrella, but don't get a mouthful of rain. Now you can drink. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to. <laughs> Here we go. Are you tired of summer nights in Maine? Do you yawn when they speak of sunny Spain? Could you live without ever seeing old Rangoon? Then fly with me, let's go swinging on the moon. Baby, we're gonna blast off
15,000 cabs in New York City, but there's only one that pays you. Climb into the cash cab and I'll quiz you all the way to your destination. As the meter clicks, the questions get harder and the stakes get higher. If you get stumped, you can shout out for help on the phone Alice, or off the street. Can I ask you a question? But be careful, because in this rig, it's three strikes and you are out. So what do you say? You in? Core, I lifted weights, and no matter how much I lifted, no matter how much I ran, I still didn't lose that much weight. I'd lose a little weight, but uh, nothing like P90X got me. In the spring of 07, I started to have chest pains. I decided to go to see the doctor. I had a uh, clogged artery, my left descending coronary artery, and I, I had stent surgery at that time. And it was just a stroke of luck. Stroke, get it? Ah. <laughs> I ran into Brad, and uh, he told me about P90X. And I said, does it work? And he showed me his abs, and he says, yeah, it works. Check this out. And I go, wow, that's pretty cool. And I, I tried it, and look, now I have abs, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is core. This is not just crunches, OK? This is big time. I couldn't believe all the different types of exercises you could do plus stretching and yoga, core work. I knew that this was the workout for me. At first, I was exhausted. I definitely had to get used to it, but, but it didn't take too long. If you follow the diet guide, if you follow the program, you push play every day, you will get results, guaranteed. I'm probably in the best shape of my life right now. You know, I mean, I'm still 51 years old. My skin's getting a little wrinkly in places, but you know, I feel really good. I mean, I'm doing as many pull-ups now as I did when I was in the Marine Corps. So that's, that's saying something. Got some guns here. Got tickets to the gun show, eh, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> this is P90X, the 90-day home fitness revolution. Get lean and ripped at home. This is P90X. Bring it to me. Get sexy and toned without a gym. Look at that form. I love you. And have the body you've always wanted using the number one fitness program in America, P90X. This is the program that's changing people's attitudes about home fitness. Pro athletes, firefighters, even active duty Marines use P90X as their fitness solution. And now, so can you. This 12 DVD program is based on the advanced training science of muscle confusion. By constantly introducing new moves and routines, your body never has time to adapt to the workouts, which means every day your muscles are challenged. And with challenge comes change. P90X completely shatters your concept of home workout DVDs. There's five hardcore resistance routines for muscle building, strength, and power. Three fat-scorching cardio workouts for energy and stamina, including Kenpo Karate and Plyometrics, plus extreme yoga and advanced flexibility, and two washboard ab ripping and core strengthening routines, all designed to get you absolutely ripped in only 90 days. You'll also get the P90X three-phase nutrition plan.